Paul wrote in Romans uh, concerning the life within us. He says, you are not of the, in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life is, the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So the purpose of God then is to have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you and that the Holy Spirit might be molding you into the person who God wants you to be. It's also the process which we call sanctification. So after you're born of the Spirit, God wants to change you from the person you were before you became a believer in Jesus to the person who God wants you to be. He does this by the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now we saw last week that the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament uh, moves upon people, comes upon them by the Spirit as God raises up people to lead and to guide the people of God, speaks through Moses, through the prophets, through the elders of Israel, and he speaks through the prophets and the writers of the scriptures who were moved by the Holy Spirit to write down the things which they wrote. Prophets also foretell the coming of the Messiah who would be filled with the Holy Spirit and have a prophecy also of the Holy Spirit being poured out upon all flesh. So let's have a look at what it says in the New Testament. And today we're going to look at really what we see in the Gospels concerning the Holy Spirit leading up to the day of Pentecost, which I won't get into. We'll look at that next week. And next week we'll look at the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and subsequently in the book of Acts. So coming to the New Testament and the uh, Gospels, we see that Jesus tells us about the Holy Spirit, tells us he is going to come and dwell within us, make us the people of God, God wants us to be, tells us to be, we need to be born of the Spirit and to be baptized, to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that's the purpose of God for each one of us. He wants to have God being formed in us by the Holy Spirit. As I said, we can't work it out ourselves. We can't make ourselves to be the person who God wants us to be. We have to receive from God and have God's Spirit dwelling within us to change us from the person who we were to the person who God wants us to be. And we look through the Gospels, you can see that the Holy Spirit is involved right through in the incarnation, in the ministry, and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right back to the birth of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. So a unique event took place when the Holy Spirit came upon Miriam, mother of Jesus, and Jesus was incarnated in her womb supernaturally by the work of the Holy Spirit. And when the angel came to reveal this to Miriam, uh, she said, how can this be? And the angel answered her in Luke chapter 1, verse 35, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the highest will overshadow you, therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the, Holy, the Son of God. So the incarnation of Jesus was by the Holy Spirit. Interestingly, his forerunner also had some connection with the Holy Spirit in John the Baptist. In Luke chapter 1, as John was conceived in the womb of Elizabeth, who had been barren up to that time, it said, uh, the angel said to his father, Zacharias, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. So John would actually be a, uh, have a different dimension, if you like, to be filled with the Holy Spirit from the mother's womb. So even as he was in the, Holy, in the womb of his mother, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. You actually have a very interesting little detail, which often people miss, but which I think is fascinating, in the fact that uh, John was conceived uh, six months before Jesus. So Miriam became pregnant uh, with Jesus uh, six months after Elizabeth did. And we read in the Gospel of Luke that Mary went to visit Elizabeth at her home and uh, at this time, Mary was just pregnant, so the seed within her, Jesus, was just a tiny, tiny little baby, and John Elizabeth was six months pregnant. And it says, it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, so how did the babe leap in her womb? Well, it says, John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit always bears witness to Jesus. So when Mary came into the room with Jesus in her womb, the baby in, John the, in Elizabeth's womb leapt 
for joy because he recognized Jesus coming into the room. Isn't that amazing? And it just tells you something about the work of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural power which is behind all of this and that Jesus is indeed God with us, God uh, Emmanuel, God in the flesh. And we see that John the Baptist himself also had a ministry when he began preaching to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. And one of the things which Jesus said, uh, John said concerning Jesus in Luke 3, verse 16, uh, he said, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So he knew that Jesus was going to come and Jesus was going to bring something which he called the Holy Spirit some person called the Holy Spirit who is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And just a little later, Jesus comes to John and asks to be baptized by him. John says, you should baptize me, but he says, no, let it be done to fulfill all righteousness. And as Jesus is baptized in water, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all come together to anoint Jesus and to confirm him as he is about to begin his ministry. Uh, another fascinating scripture, if you really understand what it's talking about. Chapter 3, verse 22 of Luke says, The Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So the Father speaks from heaven and says, You are my beloved Son. The Holy Spirit comes upon him and uh, comes upon him like a dove as he is baptized in water, as Jesus then begins his public ministry. So you have this confirmation of Jesus by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as he begins his public ministry. And then it says, Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Then in verse chapter 4 it says, uh, then uh, later on, verse 14 of Luke, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went throughout all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he, came when he, so he came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and, all the, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Another amazing event taking place in the life of the Lord Jesus. Note that it says he went to the synagogue, as was his custom, telling you, of course, that Jesus was Jewish. <laughs> and that he kept the Jewish customs, and he was going to a synagogue where he was known, and they gave him the scroll of the book of Isaiah to read, which uh, would be the Haftorah reading, if you like, in modern terms. He read from the prophet, and it just so happened it opened up at this prophecy from Isaiah chapter 61. And Jesus reads these words, which we just read, about the Spirit of the Lord being upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel, to bring good news to the poor, to give sin, heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The next verse in Isaiah actually says, and to say, and the day of vengeance of our God. And it's interesting that Jesus actually stops at this point, because at this point he's come as the Messiah to bring the good news of salvation. Uh, at his second coming, he's going to come to bring the day of vengeance of our God, the day when he will judge the world in righteousness according to how we have responded to the gospel message. But even those fascinating little details in the scriptures actually tell you something about the ministry of Jesus, that he come at this time to bring good news, and he's still bringing good news. If you want to believe in Jesus, you can have your sins forgiven, you can have an eternal life, you have a hope for the future, and he will comfort you in your distress, and he'll help you in your life to live a life pleasing to him. And as he closed the book, he gave it to the attendant and said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So Jesus was saying, this is about me. This which was written about Isaiah, written by Isaiah 700 years or so previously, is actually a prophecy of Jesus, the Messiah coming, coming in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring a message of good news. And we see that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it all points towards Jesus 
as the Messiah, one who comes uh, to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. And commenting on Jesus' ministry in uh, Acts chapter 10, uh, Peter, speaking to Cornelius, says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we read right through the Gospels how Jesus did just that. Went and preached the Gospel, brought good news, healed people, healed the sick, drove out demons, gave new life to people, even raised the dead, and showed that he was the Messiah by the works that he did. How did he do those powerful works? A, because he is God himself, and B, because he had the Holy Spirit working upon him. And they were demonstrations to the, of the fact that Jesus is God, Emmanuel, God with us. And he is the one who can uh, minister in areas where we can't minister because he is God and he made us in the first place. 